Good morning, everyone. Jonathan Miller here again, and welcome to another edition of the Broken Stones uh, podcast. Joining me today, Gareth Robertson from Design Pit. Welcome, Gareth. Good morning. Thanks for having me on, Jonathan. Good to see you again, buddy. Yeah, good to see you too. Um, another one of these podcasts, obviously, we're going to be talking business, we're going to be talking about Gareth, his history, his relationship with our business as well, just for um, the viewers and the listeners. Gareth, I've known Gareth probably for about five years now since I joined Broken Stones. Uh, in my sales and marketing role, and Gareth was really helpful with me in the early doors in terms of bits and pieces of marketing uh, strategy and support. But more importantly, Gareth has done, I would say, almost all of our marketing communications in terms of brochures and designs and help with the website and various other things. But over to you, really, Gareth, and you, you know, introduce yourself to the listeners, and, and we'll crack on from there. Cool. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, so my name's Gareth. My company is Design Pit, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, the, the relationship with Broken Stones probably goes back to about 2007 um, when I first met Chris. And I met Chris when I was in a previous job before I set my business up. So um, the relationship with Broken Stones is, is yeah, getting on for 14, 15 years um, old now, which is pretty crazy, really, um, to think, you know, that's how long I've known Chris for. And uh, yeah, so um, so I'm a graphic designer, and I uh, I'm going to give you the spiel now. But I help businesses be seen, heard, and remembered with with powerful graphic design. Um, you know, you'll you'll um, you'll buy into this, but you know, business is all about getting and keeping more customers. You probably hear a lot of, of that because I know Chris's sort of allegiance with the Nigel Botterill. Um, a gang and, and, and they talk about getting and keeping customers quite a lot and 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 essentially that is what graphic design does um you know if you haven't got customers coming into your business then you haven't got any any business really um and and once you've got them in there and you're serving them well you need to make sure you keep them so and graphic design is is one of those tools that you can utilize to to help you do that so being seen is all about having the right identity the right logo the right the right look and feel um being heard is the right narratives the right messages uh, and being remembered is 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 a combination of all of those things um and, and it also sort of touches into it, it in my opinion this is how i work anyway it touches on sort of like a bit of customer service as well and like your after sales and how you sort of interact with people once you've done a project with them so graphic design is is quite a key tool really for uh, for anyone in business who's looking to grow Fantastic. You've touched on something already, which I'm quite passionate about. Winning customers is difficult. Mm. Keep, and, uh, you know, you put a lot of effort in, a lot of budget. You know, there's a lot of work about how much it costs you to actually, you know, attract and, and then recruit a new customer. But then losing them, if, if, if you're not doing the right things with them, is almost criminal. We, we know there is churn, obviously. But if, you know, if you keep a customer for a short period of time, it's almost criminal, isn't it? I mean, you've said the relationship with us there, you know, it's coming on to 14 or 15 years now. So, I'm not, I'm not trying to big you up too much, but you're obviously doing something right. But, you know, the relationship is strong between us. Yeah, I, th I think that's, like, in my mind, that's how you define a customer and a client. I think a customer is some, someone who comes into your business and maybe buys once, maybe buys twice, but, you know, maybe every six months. But there isn't really any interaction there. There's not much of a relationship, as you say. But if you've got a client, that's someone who you, you know well, you, you, you grow that relationship on a business level. And, and often, like, like we get on quite well and we're connected on Facebook. And obviously, I've moved house now. But um, when, when I was up in the Midlands, you know, we used to catch up, um, you know, like at networking events and, and you know, we became look, good friends. So, you know, if you've got that sort of relationship, sort of ticking on then there's no reason really why you should lose clients it, it should be something that you know you can develop and it's a lot cheaper to get work from existing clients and customers than it is to recruit new ones and there is some statistic and math out there that, that you know proves that but um i think we all know that deep down so um you know having having good relationships is is key really and 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 you know how you portray yourself to your customers and how you um, nurture that relationship. You know, graphic design does play a key part in that, really. Yeah, uh, you've talked about customers, obviously, and and that's what this is all about. Have you got a have you got a key type of customer, key vertical that you work in? Have you got some particular strengths? 
Um, I'm really good with businesses of a similar size to Broken Stones, really. Um, so, like a, a, a very well established SME that's that sort of like probably. I mean, Broken Stones is probably classed as a small business. But, I mean, how many of you are there now? Oh, well, there's ten of us, sir. Yeah, so it is a small business. It's not a micro business, but it's it's certainly not a medium. I mean, medium is something ridiculous, like two hundred and fifty people, isn't it? That's how yeah, it's classified. Yeah, we're not we're not quite there yet, but we yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, you know, any businesses that are sort of in that sort of bracket, I'm, I, I work, you know, a lot with businesses that sort of size. So anything from sort of ten customers up to about two hundred and fifty employees. Um, I'm really good with brands. Really good with design for print. Uh, I do a bit of design for web as well. Um, and in recent times, especially during COVID uh, lockdowns last year, um, I started doing a lot more in the realms of social media, mm -hmm. uh, content creation, uh, and sort of developing my skill set to include that as well. So, um, it, and in my mind, if you're a good designer, you can design for anything. Really, it, it's about looking at something with an objective eye, uh, and 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 sort of like pulling it apart. Really, to say, does it do what I want it to do? Um, you know, have is the form fused with the function like, as well as it can, uh, and that that's what it's all about, really. So, um, so yeah, so it, it, it's a pretty broad offering, um, but the nice thing about about it and why my customers enjoy it is it's me doing it as well. In the main, I lead pretty much every project that we take on. Fantastic. I remember a while back you you were doing quite a lot of work around packaging as well. Is that, is that something which you're still active in? Or yeah, definitely. We, I've not done as much in recent times. Um, but we, we went through a period of, of time, probably 2018, 2019. Um, we were doing quite a lot. So in, in terms of a lot of labelling for gin bottles, which was good fun. Um, done some water bottles over the years. Um, was there a was, toothpaste business? Was that one of them? I, I'm trying to think yeah, back. Yeah, there was there was a, a company up in Nottingham that we did um, – toothpaste boxes the tubes the literature that went inside the box with the tube um social graphics around it as well that was that was included in, the, in that project um but we've also done um we did one year we did i think it was 2019 we did um 30 different boxes uh for novelty socks so it's basically the whole new range of novelty socks and they were like deliberately mixed match so you'd buy a box and there'd be six socks in there but the theme would be like dinosaurs for example and you'd have six different dinosaurs so the deliberately odd socks it was it was a really great product great company um and um we did the whole range uh, that year uh, and then the following year i was gutted because they went with a large london agency that basically whatever we did work because this london agency came in did a massive pitch and uh, we, we, we lost out because of because of scale and, and, and ge geography as well to be fair this client was like a lot closer to london than we are so um so i was a bit gutted about that one but that was a nice job to work on um all of these are on the website as well uh, designpit.co.uk uh, if you scroll down on the portfolio page they're all included on there so no, i remember um, uh, i remember seeing you at a show i think where you took along a, a load of them and i think i might even still be wearing mine not today but i think i might still have mine yeah um what was it i can't remember um i think it was a chamber of commerce show over towards Stoke right, or something yeah. like that yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, how do you um not not trying to give away trade secrets or anything now, but I mean, how do you go about win winning your business and how do you go about winning your clients? How do you put yourself out there? Uh, I'm you probably gathered. I'm pretty big on relationships and getting to know people. So, um, you know, it's all right having you know good digital channels like you know good email marketing, good socials, good website, but you can't beat getting out and meeting people. Um, you know having a chat, getting to know people. If, if you get on with people, it's really easy to do business with them. And so I do a lot of networking, uh, always have done really. There's a story actually, when, when I first set the business up, I kind of sat there on uh, the first day and I kind of looked at my Mac and I sat there and I thought, right, I'm working for myself. And I've got no work to do. <laughs> um, and uh, basically I set the business up on the premise that I'd, I'd, I had a client that was going to place a large exhibition project with me which was probably worth in the regions of about 10 grand so as, as a kickoff project for a new business it was perfect um and uh base ultimately I, I took the plunge and set the business up uh and then the day after he basically sort of turned around and said i'm really sorry but we're not going to be placing the project with you which was a real kick in the uh 
in the goonies, shall we say. But yeah, the first day was a bit of a, a bit of a wake up call. And uh, the first month, I think I turned over like 400 quid. I was scratting around for jobs here and there. Uh, my overhead at that point was like 600 because I had a little car I was running and, you know, I had to pay a bit of board at my mum and dad's and whatnot. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then a friend of mine introduced me to networking. So I started doing a lot of breakfast clubs. Um, and, and, and from there, it, it sort of took off really because you, you get your name out there and you can you, you get your personality across really. And if you find a group of people that you enjoy the company and they, they get on with you, um, you can talk business and naturally referrals will flow. So that's key for me. Fantastic. Um, you obviously had quite an upheaval in the business over the, over the last couple of years. Do you just want to tell people briefly about that and, and how the, the transition and geographies has gone for you? Yeah. So, um, yeah, the business, basically, the business was established in uh, 2012. So we're approaching our 10th year in business in February next year, which is quite cool. Uh, I'm very proud of that as well, actually, because it's, it's always been my business. I've never had partners or investors or anything like that. It's always been me basically going out there, grafting and, and sort of building it to what it was. So um, what it is. Um, so I grew the business. Uh, I think I took on my first member of staff. I've got it written down somewhere here, but I think it was in 2014. So a couple of years after uh, we got going, it might have been 2015 actually. I can't remember. It was around that time, 14, 15. Um, I took on my first member of staff um, who was a designer. Uh, and it was me and Dan for um, uh, about four years. Um, and during that four year period, we took on another designer um, who ultimately didn't work out as well as we'd hoped. Um, she um, exited the business and then we took on an apprentice. Uh, and, and at the same time, we took on like a, I think we called her a studio manager. So we had um, a, a couple of days a week um, like this lady came in and sort of tidied up the sort of loose ends really um because we were quite busy we were doing quite well at this time lots of work uh and then um towards the sort of middle part of 2018 and towards the end um it's it was all around brexit really and the uncertainty around that about what would happen and you know would there be a recession and you know we don't know what's gonna sort of you know happen when this separation occurs um we had three large customers at this time and all of them were heavily reliant on europe for supply chain or selling into buying for whatever uh, and all of a sudden these three big hitters just slowly started turning the taps off um you know they weren't doing projects that that we'd done for six seven years you know at this point uh, about five or six years probably. And um, it was a real worry because we'd not done anything wrong as such. It's just, you know, external circumstances sort of changed the sort of game, as it were. And um, ultimately, um, it put the squeeze on. And um, we were, towards 2019, we were probably about a third of turnover down for the year, which was a uh, twitchy bum time. Um, my mental health suffered quite, quite a lot. Um, I was in a really, really bad place for about six months. And um, we had this sort of like turnover, drop in sales, slowing down um, on top of issues with, we had had issues with staff, which was, you know, really difficult. Um, so I had to make some changes. Um, and uh, it was really difficult because I wasn't sharing this with anyone because at the time my wife was going through um a period in her job where she'd been put at risk of redundancy as well so she was dealing with stuff in her career and i was dealing with stuff with mine and we weren't sharing and, and it came to a head one day where i was feeling particularly low and we had a big sit down and we had to make some changes so um we uh, relocated the office we scaled the office right back um unfortunately um i had to let dan go um he'd been with me for four years at this point which was a real a real wrench because we got on very well we worked well together um and it was it was a really difficult conversation that was um the apprentice eve who was with us who was also brilliant really good i would have loved to have taken her on on a full-time uh, proper contract but her apprenticeship came to an end at this time as well so it was a little bit of an easier sort of exit that one because it was like a natural end um to, the, to her contract as it were um, and uh, yeah, scaled it all back, um, shifted the whole business to 
um, a collaborative model with um, other freelancers and other businesses that you know I've built up relationships with over the years. Um, and from client side, not a lot changed really, it, other than they got to speak to me a lot more because there was only me in the business now. So, um, so I managed to sort of tick things over for six months um, and, you know, pull it round. Things were going in the right direction. Overhead th dropped through the floor um, uh, because of, you know, it, it was a much smaller sort of entity now. And then um, uh, started to pull it round. And then we got walloped with the uh, news that COVID was going to lock us down. So, Everyone started stressing about money, and I was sort of sat there going, "Welcome to the club." <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so that that's that's how it sort of worked in the end, and uh, from my side. And then Sarah, my wife, is a, a really good PE teacher, and um, she was looking for work at this time because ultimately her job uh, was made redundant. The school that she was teaching at closed, really badly managed as well. I won't name names, but um, it was very badly managed, and um, she was left. Um, uh, basically sort of teaching on bank staff for a teaching supply agency, which she, she hated. Uh, she didn't enjoy it at all. And she couldn't find the right job. So in the Midlands, there just wasn't the school that really sort of like, you know, appealed to her. And th th if, if there was a school like that up there, they weren't recruiting. So I said to her, like, look, widen the search because ultimately it doesn't really matter where I'm based. As long as I've got electricity and internet, I can work from anywhere. So, um, she uh, widened the search and she found a job in Salisbury, an amazing girls' school down here. Um, and she applied and she got it. So now this was just before she got the job in February 2020. So it was just before COVID locked us all down. So we were really excited because the house went on the market. We sold it quite quickly and then really excited. And then wallop, you know, COVID's going to lock us down. And we started panicking then thinking we've sold our house pretty much here and we're not sure if the job is still going to be there because you know it changes the landscape doesn't it and um a couple of conversations on the phone with the new boss um and and you know minds put at rest and, and we all ultimately ended up moving down from Litchfield to Salisbury in August 2020 so um and uh, yeah I, I, this is where I am now this is my garage so father-in-law and I built an office for me to work from at home so um, I just work remotely a lot of my work is still in the Midlands but I come up once a month to see clients up there and catch up touch base and have kick-off meetings or strategy meetings and you know, work out what we could be doing um, and uh, yeah I'm starting to get a bit of a reputation down here because I've started networking down here and um, starting to get a pick up a few projects here and there as well which is nice so uh, Brilliant. Yeah, so that's that's it, really. Well, it's, there, sorry, no, no, it's it's a great story. You know, it, it um, you know there were some lows and some highs, and and you know from personal experience, you know you, you seem positive, busy. The quality of your work is still great. I'll go on to that in a minute. We'll talk about final thing, a project you've done for us recently. Um, but you're you're a great example of what they call the modern workplace now, which is any person, any device, anytime, anywhere. You know, the technology allows you to to be productive wherever you're based, which is great. But, you know, thanks for sharing that. And it's a really sort of open and honest insight into your last couple of years. So one bit of the business we haven't perhaps talked about is, is the print side of it, I guess. And, and that relates to something Gareth has done from us recently, which is our new brochure. There it is. You, this is probably the first, well, the first time you see me holding it anyway. But yeah, yeah. I've not we, had uh, a copy yet. So you have to keep me one of them because I, I don't think I've got any file copies. I'll yet. post you on down. They, they've worked out brilliantly. But so uh, we, we've taken on a marketing assistant, a marketing apprentice over the last uh, few months, Taylor, um, who is helping us do this call right now. Uh, and she was tasked, one of the tasks I gave her was coming up with a brochure, which, which she did a valiant job on. Um, but we quickly found out when it came to sort of getting out to print that, that, the, there's some certain issues which needed addressing fairly quickly. Nothing to do with the work Taylor did. The work she did was brilliant, but it, just in terms of the templates we were given. And, and uh, Gareth rescued us, I think is the best way to describe it. You did a relatively decent amount of free consultancy work for us, but then put it out to the other part of your business, you know, the print pit side. I don't know if you want to briefly talk about that. Yeah, well, Taylor did a cracky job on the design and the layouts. Um, the problem was that, that, that they, they weren't the right size. I don't think there was bleeding crop marks. So it, they weren't actually, strictly speaking, ready for print. So 
did a bit of work with Taylor um, because it was only going to help her, you know, and, and I think that's a, a key thing. Really. Like my, my, my missus thinks that all business is like a dragon's den and everyone's out to stab you in the back. And, and I was like, it couldn't be any further from the truth, really. You know, if you've got clients, you look after them and, you know, to be able to spend a little bit of time here and there helping Taylor out is only going to help her long term as well. It's going to help you out and it's going to help secure an order for my new part, a new part of my business, which I'm looking to push and, and kick off, really. So um, so it was it was, you know, a little bit of time spent is worthwhile. So we got the artwork sorted and then, um, yeah, you place the order with print pit. So I, I often get asked to print things once I've designed them and, you know, the process of, of buying print effectively and cost, you know, cost effectively, but getting the right product for, for what's required is, is, can be a time consuming process. So I could spend, you know, a morning sourcing suppliers, getting quotes, um, you know, doing a margin and, you know, then, oh, we want a different quantity, excuse me. So you do the process again and, you know, it's all admin, it, it all adds up. Um, so <laughs> uh, I looked at it and I thought, you know, I could be spending three, four hours on admin and earning 25 quid. It just doesn't make sense. So I looked and looked high and low for um, basically an online solution where people could generate their prices themselves and, um, I found that in, in a piece of software that um, I basically bought into and I'm, I'm, I've now got printpit.online, which is a trading name of Design Pit, but it's effectively web sales. Um, and people can take the artwork that I've designed or anyone's designed, upload it, buy their buy their product, upload their artwork, and a few days later, it's um, it will be delivered. So that's a, a new innovation that happened through lockdown actually it launched in February 2020 so um, and it's something I'm looking to push going forward as well I mean we're thrilled with like I say how this has come out the quality and the content and how it looks we've had some great feedback from clients we've had a piece of business from it already Brilliant. which is great and we've only really had it a week and we've also got a digital uh, version which you, you kindly gave us as well which is brilliant and it's probably just leading me on to my final point actually because I, I appreciate time is pushing on just the, the work that you did there both in terms of the advice and the consultants and then the quality of the product just, just sits brilliantly with us you know Taylor is new into marketing but she's got a contact now for future for future jobs that she does, you know, um, we obviously trust you implicitly with our work and, and it's the sort of service we get from you and we are very, very grateful, uh, very grateful indeed. So I'm probably going to start winding things up now, but if there's anything you feel we haven't covered that you desperately want to get out, now's probably the best time, Gareth. No, I think we've covered quite a lot really, haven't we? And I've, I've probably waffled on enough, but um, I suppose the key thing really is um, to, to, to sort of say, you know, if anyone has any questions about graphic design, branding, uh, print, uh, web digital, anything like that, really. Um, if there's any way uh, I can help, I'd be happy to take calls or emails. Um, so designpit.co.uk is the website for um, the design business. Uh, printpit.online is the printing website. Uh, my email is gareth at designpit.co.uk um, and phone numbers are on those websites as well. So if anyone wants to get in touch, they can. Happy to take calls and advise where I can. And um, if you've got any projects, just you know, hit me up, and I'm I'm happy to provide quotes. Really, yeah, cool. And you're very active on social media. You're on Facebook and LinkedIn and the various other yeah. uh, platforms. Uh, there's a lot of content you throw out there. You do your own podcast as well, which I which I you know subscribe to, and they're great. He also runs competitions, people, for freebies now and again. I still <laughs> haven't won. In hint, <laughs> still haven't won, but I keep entering, so there you go. But listen, thanks for your time today, Gareth. That's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, you know, really open and honest about your journey over the last couple of years. But also, you know, for everybody out there, thanks once again for all the good work you do for us. It, it is brilliant. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, thanks for your time, Gareth, and uh, we'll uh, we'll meet you again soon. Top, man. Cheers, mate. See you soon. Okay, guys. Bye-bye.